Mercedes recently announced the rollout of what they are calling DrivePilot, which is an SAE level three system capable of quote, conditionally automated driving. So Mercedes is about to release a level three system. However, Tesla's autopilot and full self-driving system is still technically classified as an SAE level two system. So has Mercedes surpassed Tesla when it comes to autonomous driving technology? Stick around as I compare the Mercedes Drive Pilot first class system to Tesla system to answer that question. I'm John and this is Cleaner Watt. Mercedes is about to release level three conditional autonomous driving late this year and into next year, which will make Mercedes, as they mention in this press release quote, the first automotive manufacturer in the world to introduce this system in a standard production vehicle to US customers. As a reminder, when I refer to levels of automation, I'm referring to the levels set forth by SAE International. I'm not gonna go over all the details in this chart, but just as a broad overview, you can see there in blue, level zero, one, and two. With that section there, with those levels, the driver is still 100% in charge of the vehicle. On the right-hand side, you can see that in green, level three, four, and five are referred to by SAE International as automated driving features, which means that while the level three, four, or five system is active, the car is driving and not the driver. In short, with a level zero, one, or two system, the driver is required to pay attention, keep their hands on the steering wheel, and be ready to take over control of the vehicle at all times, while level three, four, and five are hands-off driving features. However, do note that since level three systems have quite a few limitations, the driver does need to be ready to take over if conditions change, and the system will alert the driver of this, usually with an audible and visual cue, letting the driver know they need to take over. This chart also makes it clear that with a level three or level four system, um, the system will only be able to drive the car in a limited number of situations and, and not in all situations. So the only classification that really applies to a fully autonomous vehicle is level five, because in this chart, in the column, what do these features do for level five, it's written quote, this feature can drive the vehicle under all conditions. Tesla does include this disclaimer on their website when you go to purchase a vehicle just under the FSD section quote, the currently enabled features require active driver supervision and do not make the vehicle autonomous. Okay, with those classifications out of the way, let's now actually compare the two systems. Tesla's system, their full self-driving system versus Mercedes Drive Pilot first class. Despite Tesla FSD technically being a level two system, once again, it's extremely capable and has very few limitations when it will not work. Mercedes system, on the other hand, is extremely limited. Back in September, Edmonds posted a short video clip on x.com describing the limitations of Mercedes system. And they also wrote here a summary of those limitations. In this post is written quote, operating conditions for Mercedes level three drive pilot system, highway only, must be following another vehicle, 40 mile per hour maximum, no interchanges, no inclement weather, no flashing lights in vicinity, daytime only, cannot change lanes. In addition to those limitations, in this Mercedes press release, it's made very clear that this level three system has only been approved in California and Nevada. So when it comes to comparing this to Tesla, while limited, Mercedes does offer a truly hands-off level three driving experience when conditions are met, whereas Tesla's FSD system is once again technically a level two system and the driver is fully responsible for the vehicle, needs to keep their hands on the wheel and be ready to take over at any time. According to this car and driver article, if a Mercedes vehicle gets into an accident while their level three drive pilot system is activated, Mercedes will be responsible for the accident. In addition, while Mercedes system will not work on the highway, Tesla's FSD will work on the highway and on city streets. In addition, Tesla system does not require you to be following another vehicle to work. While Mercedes system has a 40 mile per hour maximum, Tesla system has an 85 mile per hour maximum. Drive pilot is not able to complete interchanges, whereas Tesla system is capable of most traffic patterns. 
DrivePilot will not work in inclement weather. However, Tesla's system does function in some inclement weather, although the system may not operate in more extreme inclement weather. Mercedes system will not work when flashing lights are around. I imagine that's really to do with emergency vehicles. And the system will not operate in construction zones, whereas Tesla's system is able to operate in those conditions. One of the biggest downside of Mercedes system is the fact that it can only be used in the daytime, whereas Tesla's system works in the daytime or the night. DrivePilot cannot change lanes, whereas Tesla's system automatically changes lanes. Although automated lane changing is available in the Mercedes Level 2 suite of features, but switching over from DrivePilot to their regular assisted driving features in a Mercedes, as is written in this car and driver article, is still clunky. In addition, clear lane lines are required for DrivePilot to work, while as is written in this Tesla post, on x.com, quote, the concept of lanes is only loosely built into our system, enabling the car to confidently drive on unmarked roads. And once again, the Mercedes Level 3 system will initially only be operational in California and Nevada, whereas Tesla's FSD works in all 50 states here in the USA. Now, something that makes Tesla really stand out from the rest of the competition that's trying to achieve full self-driving vehicles comes down to the sensor suite used by Tesla versus other companies. For example, Tesla mainly relies on their cameras and their computer learning to drive the vehicles. However, with the hardware 4 enabled Model S and X, Tesla did bring back radar sensors. But nonetheless, Tesla's sensor suite is quite limited compared to other companies. For example, with Mercedes, they use cameras, LiDAR, radar, ultrasonic sensors, a road moisture sensor, and an antenna array, which is supposed to be more accurate than GPS. This larger sensor suite that Mercedes is using in their vehicles on paper sounds great, and it sounds like it's a great thing, but it can overly complicate the system and you can overly rely on these sensors, which allows you not to develop um, the AI side of the equation, which Tesla is really relying heavily upon that. And at the end of the day, if Tesla is able to achieve full self-driving capabilities, level five full self-driving capabilities with their vehicles, they're going to be able to roll out their systems at a much lower cost than the competition that's relying on all these expensive sensors and this complicated sensor suite. In addition, Mercedes system relies on HD maps, but they have apparently solved the problem of maps potentially getting out of date because in this press release, it's written, quote, each vehicle also stores a copy of this map information on board, constantly compares it with the backend data and updates the local data set as required. Tesla, on the other hand, has taken a different approach and they don't rely on HD maps, but instead they rely on computer learning. On that note, the official Tesla account on x.com replied to a post by Tesla owners Silicon Valley with the following. Tesla FSD doesn't rely on high definition maps, which means autopilot can be enabled at locations the car has never seen before. While it does take navigation into account to arrive at the correct destination, it will simply stay on the most likely path if no route or map is available. The path is determined by what most people would have done in any given scenario, powered by learnings from our global fleet of millions of vehicles. The concept of lanes is only loosely built into our system, enabling the car to confidently drive on unmarked roads. When it comes to a cost comparison, according to this Mercedes press release, the initial cost of installing DrivePilot First Class on select EQS and S Class models starts at $2,500. This press release is unclear as to whether it will be um, $2,500 a year for a subscription cost going forward or if it will be less than that. But in comparison with Tesla's system, basic autopilot is included with every vehicle. Enhanced autopilot can be purchased for an extra $6,000 and their full self-driving package can be purchased for $12,000. Tesla also offers monthly subscription for their full self-driving package for those who don't want to pay $12,000 up front. And if you just have basic autopilot enabled on your vehicle and you want to enable full self-driving capability, that costs $199 per month. Or if you already have enhanced autopilot and you want FSD capability, you can pay $99 per month. So beyond the level two, level three classification, when you actually look at features and capabilities, Tesla's system as it is today is already far better than Mercedes system. But Tesla's system is about to get a lot better when they release their version 12 FSD software. On August 25th, Elon Musk live streamed an over 40 minute FSD version 12 test drive 
which is a version that has not yet been released to the public. Once released, version 12 should no longer be a beta version and should be an end-to-end -end AI system that should be capable of level 4 or level 5 autonomous driving. Elon Musk made it very clear several times when the car did specific actions that there was not a specific line of code with version 12 that told the car to do that. Instead, the neural net was trained with real-world data, video, and images, and the car knew how to react based on this learning. Elon's exact quote from this video was, quote, There is no line of code that says, this is a roundabout. There's nothing that says, wait X number of seconds, which is what we have in the explicit control stack of version 11. There's over 300,000 lines of C++ in the explicit control stack of version 11, and there's basically none of that in version 12. So really to wrap this up, while the Mercedes system does have the benefit of being a hands-off system, the system is very limited and relies on a complicated array of sensors. With Tesla's FSD system, on the other hand, while technically level two, the system is far more capable than any other level two system. And when Tesla is ready to flip the switch and release the non-beta version of their software, there will be an immediate change. And with regulatory approval, the system should be capable of at least level three automated driving with a future software update, which may not be that far away. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. And also I wanna say thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and really does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.